I've seen people talk about student loan interest and how they are not paying down their student loan balance because they can get the write-off of their interest payments on their taxes. And that is Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. This week's video is going to be slightly different than previous earnings reporting videos because it is the new year. And so we are looking at all New Year's-ish kind of stuff. So that includes talking a little bit about student loan interest, tax deductions, DoorDash paperwork, assessing the health of your gig work business, and evaluating your profit and losses for the year. Most of the orders that I got during the holiday season offered really amazing, gracious tips. Tons of pizza orders. That's pretty much all I got between 15 to $20 in addition to the base pay. The majority of your business is based off of tips. So dashing during peak pay hours is a no brainer. With that said, peak pay is probably going to be offered more often during inclement weather during the holiday season. I capitalize on all of the peak pay incentives for the month of December. In order to really capitalize on these peak pay times, you'd have to be willing to endure really brutal weather. That includes really, really cold weather, slippery conditions, possible rain, and winter storms. If you're willing to endure something like that for the incentives that come with it, you essentially double your earnings. Okay, so looking at my total total earnings for December 2020, the total amount of money that I made in December was $1,394.18. Okay, so now let's take a look at December 2021. I made a total of $1,194.06. So which means after I made my standard monthly payment of $330.88, I was able to apply $1,100. $8.06 of my full DoorDash side income as an overpayment towards my balance on my student loan, which has brought my final student loan balance closing out the end of the year down to $3,240.49. There it goes. So this pretty much brings us to the most exhausting, but also the fun part of this debt repayment challenge because the closer you get towards the end, the more you just wish you were done. That's where I am. So in order to stay motivated, what I did was I'm changing up the strategy just a bit. My new weekly goal I'm setting for myself is $150. The goal is to make $150 each week, which would equal $1,000. If I could manage to make at least $1,000 in DoorDash income, then I'm pretty sure that I could probably also chip in the extra $500 of my full-time discretionary income to put together a total of $1,500 towards my overpayment. That means if I contributed $1,500 for the month of January and $1,500 for the month of February, I should pretty much be done. And this is not accounting for the standard monthly payment of $330. Take a look at what they're saying my now monthly minimum payment is towards my student loan. Balance. They're telling me that my now monthly minimum payment is $38.95. So this is great because that means that more of my $330 standard monthly payment that I've been continuously paying is already built into my fixed expenses. More of that now will go towards the principal. So while we're on the topic of talking about principal and interest payments, let's take a look at how much I have paid in interest only on this student loan for the year. Now, the way to find out how much you've paid overall in interest towards your student loan for the year is by taking a look at your 1098E. That information you can find on your student loan servicers website by going into the tax information of your student loan portal and being able to pull up the 1098E PDF that they have already provided for you on your account. Usually they'll send you an email or something letting you know that it's not ready for you to view and download so when I take a look at mine, it says that my student loan interest for the year that I paid was $6,301.03. That is absolutely incredible amount of student loan interest. And if all of that went towards principal, I would be done by now. And I'd probably have some extra cash that I could spend. This went to interest and this is exactly why I was so eager to get rid of it because uh, all my money is... 
because all my money is being used towards interest. And that was my own fault for waiting so long to get a handle on this. In my defense, I was just not in a financial position mentally or financially to be able to make these types of contributions towards paying down my student loan balance. So this is where we are. But it's, it's interesting that we're looking at this number because what I've noticed is in the past, like really old videos, I've seen people talk about student loan interest and how they are not paying down their student loan balance because they can get the write-off of their interest payments on their taxes. And that is kind of a false narrative. That isn't exactly how it works. This isn't saying that Essentially, the purpose of this 1098E is so that you could report this on your taxes. That doesn't mean that I could report over $6,000 and write that off on my taxes. That isn't how it works. It is based on a certain income threshold and you don't get to write off this full amount. The maximum amount is $2,500. And then on top of that $2,500, percentage of that based on your taxable income is what you then can write off on your taxes. I know I just said a mouthful, so I'm gonna try to break it down in a different way. I found two different articles that were really, really great at explaining this and I'll link it down below. And I'll link it down below in the description box so that you guys can read along with me or after if you'd like to check out what it is that I'm talking about. So this first article is by NerdWallet and it's how to get the student loan interest deduction. And it's walking you through what the 1098E is and then it talks about um, the deduction. Now there are some naysayers to this deduction on your taxes. Some people will say that it's really not even worth the paper that it's printed out on in the first place. And once we walk through this, there might actually be some validity to that comment. So it says here, the student loan interest is deductible if your modified adjusted gross income is less than $70,000. If your modified adjusted gross income is between seventy dollars and $85,000, you can deduct less than the maximum $2,500. The student loan interest deduction is not an itemized deduction. It is taken above the line. That means it's subtracted from your taxable income to save you money. For example, if you fall into the 22% tax bracket, the maximum student loan interest deduction would be $550 back in your pocket. So that was a mouthful and that probably doesn't really help you understand and how to actually do this calculation. The NerdWallet's article is really, really helpful in understanding the tax jargon behind all this, but Student Loan Hero has a really great article that actually gives you a calculator that you can use to figure out what your taxable deduction would be for writing off your student loan interest payments. So let's take a look at that. So now we're on the Student Loan Hero website where we can now look at the interest deduction calculator, which is pretty much midway on this website page. So here you'll answer five questions. Can someone else claim you as a dependent on their tax return for 2021? So in my case, the answer would be no. Your situation might be a little different if you are still in college and your parents still claim you as a dependent, but you are paying off your student loans. That answer might be a little different for you. The next question is, were payments made on your student loan first in your name in 2021? In other words, this question is asking, was this loan taken out in your name for you? In my case, that answer is yes. I have been walking you guys through the process of me paying down the student loan debt that's in my name. Now, this is not meaning that you have a co-signer. I also do have a co-signer on this, but that's not what it's asking. So I'm keeping yes for that. And then what was your 2021 modified adjusted gross income? My, I'm going to say around 50,000 is mine. And then how are you filing your taxes for 2021? 21, I'm going to file single. And then how much interest did you pay on your student loan in 2021? It only accepts whole numbers. So for me, I would just put in $6,301. So this calculator shows that the maximum deduction that you could potentially write off on your taxes would be $2,500, not $6,000. The tax benefit would be $625. So this is why some naysayers say it's not really worth the paper that it's written on because Essentially, that's after you've paid $6,000 in interest. If you were making significant overpayments on your student loans like me, and you ended up making over $6,000 in interest only payments, essentially all you're gonna get back is $625. I mean, it's nothing to really brag about. I don't really understand why people would use it as an excuse to be able to write things off on their taxes. It, it doesn't really work that way. 
<laughs> it doesn't really work that way. Um, but people do it. I am not a tax professional. This is not in any way me giving you tax advice. I'm just simply telling you what I usually do, which is I bring this to my tax preparer and that's a little bit of change that I get to contribute towards my taxable income. And as a friendly reminder, if you are enjoying this week's video and have found value in it, please don't forget to hit the like button. And if you enjoy this type of content and would like to see more, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It always helps support the channel. Okay, so let's take a look at my total earnings from my DoorDash side income for the year 2021. My total income from DoorDash came to $9,556.34 with a business profit of $3,008.67. Let's compare that to my total earnings in 2020, which I made over $18,000 with a net profit of $7,216.37. Huge difference between this year which is definitely showing the result of the economy um, between then and now. With that said, at this point, you probably should have received your 1099 NEC. Look for an email from Stripe and that's where you'll be able to get your PDF document of your 1099 and EC. And that should tell you how much you made for the year if you haven't been keeping track of it in your Stride app. Be sure to click on this video if you want to learn more information about the difference between using your standard mileage rate as a deduction versus all of your car expenses. This is a really great video to tap into if you don't know which one you should do. This video really goes through the entire Stride app and all the documents that it sends you. This way, if you were a little confused as to what I was talking about throughout this video, this video should be helpful for you. 